Welcome to the Positive Pants Podcast. Mindset, motivation, and inspiration to help you find your positive pants. It's time to let go of negative thinking, understand why you do what you do, and stop the self-sabotage with your host, Fran Excel. Welcome to the show. As always, it's Fran Excel, your resident subconscious success mentor, helping you find your very own pair of positive pants so you can get out of your own way and live a life that you love. If you want to stop sabotaging your own success and let go of the stress, then you are in the right place, my friend. Make sure you download your free stressed to success guided meditation at bit.ly forward slash stressed to success as my little gift to you for being here. Please do subscribe, share, review. It really, really helps people that need to hear this message find us. And I so appreciate it. In the show notes, you will also find details of how you can work with me and where you can get your mitts on my meditations, products, and printables. You can also find it through the link in my bio on Instagram, which is my second favorite place to hang out. So please do come join me over there at I'm Fran Excel. Tag me in your takeaways, slide into my DMs. I am here for it. So that is the formalities over my love. So let's jump into the content. Today, I want to start changing the narrative around having a job. If you've been with me any amount of time, you'll know I love to challenge an unconscious narrative or two, narrative or two, but all oh, this one's a goodie. So it's a goodie because it is rife in the online business world. The narrative I'm talking about is the one that suggests that having a job is a bad thing if you're running or trying to start a business that it's somehow a negative on you, you know, that it's this dirty word that's not to be talked about. The narrative that if you have a job, it must mean you're unsuccessful. And it's time to call, for want of a better word, BS, on this utter rubbish. It's all made up, it really is. It's simply in our psyche, because that's the messaging we're sold the most often. I don't know who came up with it or how it stuck, but I want to invite the conversation today so we can start changing this. I see too many businesses struggle, too many people struggle, too many people trying to start a business in a scarcity mindset, trying to bootstrap everything. And I promise you, this will not work and will cause you a huge amount of heartache in the long run and will take you longer, far longer to get where you want to go. I see too many people feeling like they have to leave their job too soon because if they have a job, then obviously people are going to think they're unsuccessful and all of these stupid things or that they can only do one or the other, that they have to let something go. So I want to see just how we can start to break this down a little bit. I want to change the narrative to it, meaning you're not successful to meaning that you're actually smarter and more savvy than most. Yeah? I genuinely believe that having both a job and a business is an incredible place to be for as long as you want it. I think it's a smart place to be for as long as you want it. If my industry and job hadn't had changes that meant I just wasn't going to enjoy it as much anymore, then to be honest, I probably would still have both. It was delightful in many, many ways. I actually loved having both. There was a time that I didn't and I started a business partly because I had a really difficult boss. But I realized pretty quickly that was no way to start a business. That was not a foundation. It was built on a foundation of running away from something rather than towards something, right? But also that I was allowing a difficult work environment to stop me enjoying something that being honest, I enjoyed. Yeah, I had a great time. <laughs> um, I worked in media on these huge major brands I got to go out for lunch with clients or go for nails or getting our makeup done in Charlotte Tilbury I had tons of autonomy I worked from home a lot when I wasn't working from home I'd be in cafes um, or in my agencies in and around London I mean I completely acknowledge I was in an incredibly privileged position but why would I be in a rush to give that up right now it wasn't always like that okay there were times I was chained to my desk, but I did manage to shape it so it ended up this way. So there are ways to do that. So I worked on my relationship with my boss by working on my responsibility, 
in that area? Where was I behaving in certain ways unconsciously to exacerbate the situation? Where could I make changes that could change the interaction? What was I grateful for about my job? So instead of focusing on all the negatives, what were the positives? You know, it's magic when we do that, taking responsibility for our part and watching the changes happen. Now, this is a conversation for another day, but so many of us have this drive and desire to change other people, particularly when we're changing, but we focus on changing their behavior. But the funny thing is, the way you change someone else's behavior is actually to look at and change your own. So anyway, that's for another day. So I kept my full-time job for a long time, really long time, and had a full-time business because I enjoyed it. I enjoyed them both. I enjoyed it and it made sense for me and where I was in my life and what I wanted my life to look like. But that's the key is knowing what you want your life to look like, not someone else's version of what makes you look successful in inverted commas. No one gets to tell you what that looks like or should look like. No one gets to dictate that but you. And that's why I think this conversation is really, really important. No one gets to make those decisions for you or gets to put these ideas in your head without you challenging them and going, hang on a minute, what actually makes sense for me? Yeah, I know tons of people with successful businesses who still have jobs because they want them. I mean, it's like a double whammy of financial gain, right? Why would you not want that? So what is important to you and what do you want to enjoy? I enjoyed the perks of my job. I loved working with my clients. And for transparency, there was zero conflict of interest between the two. Yeah? And I was honest with my boss about having a business. So you get to make that call, but always check your contract. And if you can have an off the record chat with HR or you have a good relationship with your boss, then great. That's 10 times better. Yeah. But full transparency there. They were aware. Um, I enjoyed the fact that it meant I could invest in my business and reinvest in my business with abandon and always know that there was more coming. That, and that was the nice thing. It's like, I really heavily, heavily invested in myself, my education, in my business, in the best mentors, the best training. I went hell for leather. <laughs> and, and I enjoyed the fact that I could invest in my own growth, education, and the highest level of qualifications. You know, I didn't, I, I, I sought out the best that I could get in those areas that I wanted to study without worrying about it. I didn't have to compromise. And I enjoyed the fact that it meant I could play around a bit with my business, experiment for a while, find my feet, have complete clarity on the direction I wanted to go. And I've talked about this before, but how do you know exactly what you want to do and who you want to work with until you've actually done it? You need that feedback to know if you're completely changing your life around something, you need to know that it's something you really want. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed the fact that it felt safe in both directions, job and business. And as an Enneagram six with a five wing where safety and security is paramount. And if you don't know about the Enneagram, DM me on Instagram because I could talk about this stuff for days. So let me know. I talk about it all the time with my one on one clients. So at least I know they will have understood what I've just said. But anyway, I digress. It was an amazing place to be. I didn't worry about redundancy. In fact, I welcomed it and waited for it intentionally. Might as well get paid to leave. Right. Voluntary redundancy glorious. <laughs> I didn't worry about turning the wrong clients down. And by the wrong clients, I mean, the ones we get those spidey senses about that we can tell are going to be a little bit of a nightmare, where every fiber of our being is saying, don't do it. You, know, you won't walk away from those in a scarcity mindset, I can assure you. You'll get yourself in a pickle. I looked at my job as my business investor. I looked at my business as my job security. You can see how that's a really nice place to be. And you can see how that's a really flipping smart place to be. So with this in mind, can we please start to change this crazy narrative that having a job means, in inverted commas, that you're not successful? It's simply not true. You can have a six-figure business and still have a job. You can have a seven-figure business and still have a job if you want to. Nobody gets to tell you what that's supposed to look like. So can we stop feeling shame if we take on a full or part-time job while we're building up our business? Or just because we want to, just because we want that differentiation. There's so many reasons why we might want that. Yeah? Can we acknowledge it's so much smarter than trying to build on a foundation of scarcity or running away from something? Can we acknowledge you might actually just enjoy doing both? 
And can we acknowledge that there are almost 50% of the workforce in the UK that currently have a side gig, a side hustle, run a business as well as their job, whatever you want to call it. So let's go, of, let's let go of the narrative and we can figure the other stuff out, like how you manage your time having both a job and a business. There's an episode on that specifically. If you just scroll through the list of episodes, there's tons that are relevant to this. How to shape your business so it works for you, your clients, and around your job so you still get to have time off. It's possible. I did it. I know plenty of other people who do it and did it. So can you. Yes, it was crazy busy at times, but I loved it. Having the business, I believe, is what made me actually enjoy my job again. You know, it gave me that sense of purpose, like a huge, huge, huge sense of purpose and sense of achievement. You know, I'd got to a level in my job where I could kind of do it standing on my head while running through a head, hedge backwards. And it was kind of part of my DNA. It was what I knew. It was who I was. Because don't forget, we attach our identity to our to our jobs, yeah, to our careers. But having all these new things I needed to learn and investigate was really exciting. But I didn't put that pressure on myself to do it overnight. I did it at first. I did it first. Obviously, I did it first because, you know, I bought into those messages that were peddled with too until I stopped myself and said, hang on, <laughs> this, this isn't right here. So this is just the very start of the conversation and the start of changing this narrative. And I would love for you to email me or DM me with any thoughts, comments, challenges, all of these different things. And if you've been feeling like you have to hide your job or that you need one and have felt ashamed, so haven't gone and got one, if not leaving it is making you feel unsuccessful in any way, stop. You're smart. It takes balls and guts and gumption to start and run your own business. Many people wouldn't do it. You are. Give yourself the time and grace to get it where you want it to be on your terms. And remember what's important to you. What is your version of success? Not what someone else tells you it should be. So if you got value from this and you know in your gut that now is the time to step up and start rewiring your thinking and start changing things for yourself, then book in a free discovery call so we can work out what needs to happen to get you from where you're at right now to the action taking success you know you can be. If you want my eyes and ears on your problems, then I work with people one on one and through my programs. You can find all the details to book in a call in the show notes, the link in my bio on Instagram and on my website, franexcel.com. So stop waiting for if and when and choose to change things now because you 100% can. I am here to believe in you when you don't believe in yourself. And as always, I hope you found this helpful and I will see you next week. Bye.